So, welcome back to the live stream of the Evo Cup. Drivers being told their grid positions now. There's been no break, so it will be a slightly longer race. This will be the first time a lot of these drivers will have uh, seen the digi board in action, but they've all been briefed on it. They all know what to expect. Last one to leave the bricks, Knife Ford. Heads around to the grid now. As the first drivers form up on the grid. Some drivers coming in quite quick. These drivers do tend to know what they're doing, but it doesn't make things easy when you've got drivers who have left the bricks before you that are in a lower grid position than you. Having said that, there's not a lot we can really do about that. So that's the last few drivers form up now. Just check everybody is in position, they're in their grid box. And the race will get going. So it looks like Daryl Taylor on pole, Sienna Gordon second, and Daniel Fields third. Connor Steele in fourth. Can't quite see who is fifth. And Enzo Matrano sixth. Cody Steele looks like at the back row there. Red lights are on, the revs come up, the green lights and away we go. So as drivers head into stadium for the first time, it looks as though Daryl Taylor's got the upper hand. Sienna Gordon trying to move around the outside, can't quite make that stick. Connor Steele getting pushed slightly wide by Daniel Fields after Daniel must have had a slightly poorer start. Nice and clean through hairpin two though. As Darrell now can try to pull away. Sienna tucking in behind the steering wheel, trying to make him, trying to stick to him like glue. And now Daniel and Connor trying to pull on him as well, both tucking in. And we're slightly dubious as to how much effect that really has in these junior carts with the roll hoop on them. But it's a psychological thing as much as anything. Connor has a look, can't make it work there. So your top four at the moment. Daryl Taylor from Sienna Gordon and then Daniel Fields from Connor Steele. Just trying to see who that is in fifth and I'm not quite sure. I'll let you know when I can read their number a bit better. position nicely. In the top four now, Daniel Fields closing on Sienna Gordon. Cody uh, Connor Steele, sorry, dropping off slightly as the front three bunch up. Let's 
Garcia and Gordon just bump draft him down there. Obviously, it's slightly lighter, slightly better entry out of pile on one. Tucking in, she's moved out. Can she have a look up the inside into stadium? Doesn't look like she's going to have that quite that advantage. As Daryl leads, re-emerges in the lead. Fields just had a good little look at Sienna Gordon. Nothing working there. The Connor Steele still in fourth place. So there are your top four. As they stretch out down the straight, we just lose Connor out of shot. And we will follow them across the four gadgets advertising as they come through the circuit. running order for you. Daryl Taylor now onto the back straight. Daniel Fields having a look at the inside of Sienna Gordon. Didn't quite work out this time. Let's see if he can get anything through stadium. He has a look, but nothing that I could see there. Maybe through hairpin. He's getting closer and closer. Sienna covers him off. Holds a strong line. Has a look over her shoulder. Sees where he is not giving him anything. They're side by side into the S's. That doesn't normally end well. They've managed it this time and they're dropping off Darrell and falling into the clutches of Connor in this battle. Daryl Taylor there crossing ahead of you and then these group of three for second, third and fourth as we have a look now at the inside goes is that Yash Farmer on Enzo didn't quite work this time It is Yash Palmer in the number eight. Didn't quite work this time, but he's not going to give up. He'll crack on and have another go. And I'll try and keep an eye on that. We'll try and make sure we get that overtake. Sienna Gordon using a defensive line down the straight. Cover off that inside line through stadium. Just forcing Daniel to adjust his line. Again, Drew Herford using very, very defensive driving to hold him back. And now Connor Steele is in that one as well. Let's see what they can do here. So nothing doing through pile on one. What about onto the back straight? Daniel using slightly more of the track. So again, moves over to the right hand side. Trying to block off, cut off that slipstream. Nothing doing there. Yash Palmer has now passed Enzo Amitrano further down the grid. You see Daryl Taylor just there, coming into hairpin two. Ahead of the rest of the field at the moment. Oh, and Connor Steele just having a little look at Daniel Fields there into hairpin two. Nothing doing this time. The problem with the carts are so even, it is very, very difficult to overtake around here. You have to know where you can get it done. And not only that, you then have to just get it done. You can't be waiting around being held up by drivers that aren't necessarily as quick as you are. Not that I think that is the case with these two. I think they're very, very evenly matched. O'Connor Steele 
having shown massive improvement in the last few rounds. He's doing exceedingly well as well to keep up with them. And he has a look, gets past. I'm not sure, quite sure what happened there. Daniel Fields is going to come back at him down the straight. Connor's got the inside line. Daniel forcing him wide onto the grass. And there might be an investigation there for contact down the straight. Because that looked to me as though Daniel Fields was pushing him on towards the grass before the turning in point. not it doesn't look like there's been a warning issue yet so the marshal just might be discussing that he might decide no further action uh, Daryl Taylor he heads into pile on one and there's a few seconds and second third and fourth Sienna Gordon Daniel Fields and Connor Steele Head through the S's, onto the back straight. Connor slightly off pace now after that small incident with Daniel Fields. No warning issued yet, so I can only assume that he may have uh, just got away with that one. The marshal's water issuing a no further warn, uh, no further action required. Otherwise oh, Daniel Fields now just having a little look at Sienna Gordon, couldn't quite get past down the straight, can he do it? And he does manage it through pile of one, that was an exceptional move. Not sure what Sienna was doing, whether she was trying a defensive line, but it's not worked at all. And Daniel Fields has managed to sneak up the inside through the second part of pile of one. Now Con Steele back in that fight. The rest of the field starting to space out a bit now, so they're going to stick with these three for the time being. Taylor now driving away as he so often does. Leaving second place Daniel Fields, third place Sienna Gordon, fourth place Cody Connor Steele, sorry, there in the grey suit, Nye Ford in the number three. Number six, that is Jack Hancock. Hancock, sorry. I keep doing that. Number eight, Gersh Palmer. And then part number nine, Cody Steele. He's related to Connor. And then part number ten, Enzo Amitrano. I think may have had a spin. He was going very well. Seems to have... Uh, lost the position now. Mr. Daryl Taylor comes back past the building into pile on one. Lifting off into hairpin one there, maybe going in a bit quicker than you uh, perhaps expected. It's now Sienna Gordon and Connor Steele very, very close. They head through. 
through the S's, what I can kind of do coming onto the straight. Not enough quite there, and it looks as though Sienna's driving away slightly. On a slightly stronger as they come into this sector through the hairpins and elbow. You can see him there closing the gap out of hairpin one. Now he's all over the rear bumper of Sienna. Can he do anything down the straight here? Sienna looks over his shoulder and sees where he is. Does it again. Connor trying to force the error now. Sienna, a cool and composed driver, nothing there. And now Connor up the inside. Sienna moved across, didn't quite realise where he was. Connor had to back out there so he wasn't run off the road, but I don't think that was intentional. I think Sienna, trying to use the defensive line, has moved across and uh, rather blocked the way. Daniel Field starting to drive away from these two now. As they go bumper to bumper again through pile on one. Neither of them using the curve at the S's. Connor uses slightly more of the road on the way out of the corner. Trying to open up. Gets in the slipstream as best he can. Closes the gap slightly coming into this middle infield section where he is quicker and he has a look around the outside at elbow, nothing doing there. Has to back off. Can he do it into, into hairpin two? Not quite. Sienna seems to be looking behind her a lot, is obviously well aware of Connor Steele and how close he really is as they come back onto the back straight again they're both tucking behind the steering wheel both tucking in, Sienna not even looking forwards now they come across this start finish and then both heads pop up again and look at their turning in point the stadium and they get through Connor now into this stronger section can he pull it off? closes the gap And then again closes the gap more. Both using all the road, Connor using slightly more. Trying to open that up that corner. He knows Sienna's got him on the straights. He's got to try and get it in the corners and get it done. Sienna with a slight mistake there, a little bit of oversteer mid corner. We head down the back straight now into stadium again. As they were when they went behind the hedge, still. Connor closes the gap. It's only a matter of time before he's close enough to get a move on. Using all the road there. Sienna looks over a steering wheel again. Over a shoulder even. Checks he's still there. More defensive line this time. Again, Connor using much more of the track on the way out of Pylon 2. Just seen uh, Cody still trying to adjust his seat belts. Uh, you see sometimes that they scratch on the neck.
sets his eyes probably for the first time on the bank markers. Still a little bit of distance between them, but he will be able to see them now. He's got someone to chase. And tends to make that one a bit quicker. We are watching the battle for third at the moment. To Sienna Gordon and Connor Steele. Very much bumper to bumper. and Connor still having to look around the outside out of elbow but not quite pulling it off it's very very tricky to overtake there but he's got the run at the inside now can he make that stick I think he's gonna and he does he cuts her off looking now has the inside line can he hold it not quite through the right hand part of pile on one that was an excellent move into hairpin two though if he can pull that off again Next lap, I think he could have this. As he comes into this section, the infield section, where he is very strong. A bit more of a gap this time than it was last time. And he just uses this lap to close that gap in again. Having a look over her shoulder. Trying to see where he is, trying to figure him out. But very soon they're going to have the fourth place driver of Knife Ford potentially catching them up. And that will really make things very interesting as Daryl Taylor now on the back of Enzo Amitrano. Not a position, obviously, that is going to be putting Enzo a lap down. Daniel Fields just goes out of shot. And it's Sienna Gordon. That man there, Connor Steele, the number five. In the Battle Royale. head onto the back straight again. Not close enough this time for Connor to try and make a move. I think he might be slightly disappointed that he couldn't quite get that move done before. As Enzo Amitrano has a lovely move up the inside of uh, Cody Steele. With some help from uh, Daryl Taylor. Again, Cody tucking in, Sienna tucking in and checking her shoulders, seeing where he is. Seems to spend more time looking behind her than she does forwards at the moment, trying to keep an eye on, Co on uh, Connor Steele. And again, looking behind her, and again, looking behind her, and again, three times, four times, five times. Does seem to spend more time looking backwards than she does forwards. And that is how much Connor Steele is piling on the pressure and he has a look around the outside now. Can't make it stick through elbow. What can he do into hairpin? Not a lot there. Still bumper to bumper. He was almost too close that time. Couldn't quite get a move done. Very, very thoughtful driver. Connor Steele, he knows knows where he can get past now, knows how Sienna's going to defend, be working up a game plan every lap, refining it. As you see Darren Taylor just uh, passing Yash Palmer, a little bit of side-to-side -side contact. We go contact warning out for car number one, so that is for Daryl Taylor. It's just a warning. Co 
Cody now, closer and closer. Can he do it down the back straight? Bumper to bumper, onto the back straight. He tucks in. He's in the slipstream. Has a look on the left. Oh, and that was very naughty. I saw Sienna move across last minute there. Whether the marshals would have seen that, I've got obviously a very good vantage point up here. That was very, very dangerous. And if that doesn't get pulled up, I'd be very, very surprised. right now and Benza, uh, Enza and Metrano on the runoff area coming into the half in one and you quite see why it's Connor Steele now still all over the back of her not going to be enough room there he's going to have to try it maybe onto the back straight there will be Contact warning has gone out to number eight. So that is Yash Palmer. Again, didn't quite see what for. Sienna has got to get a much more defensive line as they come through pep in one. Allowing Connor to carry more speed through the corner though, closes up into Hebbin 2 and now into Pilot 1. Not quite getting it done there. This cloud cover, cover is looking ominous to say the least. So I know again giving these guys quite a lot of cover, but this is an excellent battle which has been going on for the majority of the race so far. So we're probably 25 minutes into the race now. So we have a look, Daniel Fields lapping Yash Palmer now. Yash not giving that position up easily. Daniel's just going to get past him down the straight. Looks at him and says, like, come on, I'm lapping you. There's no point pushing me out wide. There's Colin Steele now. Inches between them. They come into pylon. They're going to have the traffic ahead of them. It's going to be a, to do with who can navigate that the best. This is where Connor Steele may have a slight advantage. The first driver they're going to come up against is his brother. No, we don't have teammates in uh, in this form of championship, but obviously when you're racing at the same championship as your brother and he's battling for third, you're going to give him a hand if you can. They head down the back straight again now. Out of pylon one through the S's. In ever closer to those back markers. Through stadium they go, and I think Connor had a little look but couldn't quite make it work there. 
going to have another look using all the track into hairpin one. The wind's starting to pick up now. Mayflare factor on straight line speed. It's going to be a headwind as they go back under beneath the gantry. So, I'll just put my clipboard on the floor before it blows away. It's getting that windy. So this battle for third still raging on. Just having a look, bumper to bumper as they come into hairpin one. Can he do anything through hairpin two? Not quite, but look how close those back markers are now. Once again, they're looking over his shoulder again. He needs to keep an eye on where she's going, not what's behind her. almost negates the tucking in when you're looking behind you all the time. And again, looking behind her there, coming in the stadium, it's just as you pop the head up. So now, probably on this lap, the back markers are going to come into play as they're racing as well. Enzo Amatrano gets past Yash Palmer. Just saw that out of the corner of my eyes. A nice move up the inside. Now, that is now a group of five, very much so. Some contact on Cody Steele from Sienna Gordon, nose to tail, will probably go unheeded. That big slipstream effect when you, when you get five carts like that all adds up. <coughs> Excuse me. And now he's going to come down as who can get past the back markers the best. Sienna carving the way through. Cody gets past as well, but that is his brother that he's just got past. So I'll give it as soon as he realised that, that was Connor, he's backed off, let him through. And now Sienna's got the other two, Yash Palmer and Enzo Amitrano, to try and get past. We've seen Daniel. Uh, Daniel Fields and uh, Daryl Taylor struggling to get past the ash. So we'll see how Sienna manages it. And she gets past nice and quick, gets past them both. Coming out of the stadium. Very nice move. And now Connor's got to try and chase her down. With those two drivers in the way. Having their own race, of course. This could be costly if you can't get past them this lap. It could be very costly as Sienna now opening up a big lead. Still there now, directly behind his brother on circuit. But unfortunately, not in position, so that would be a fantastic story if that was the case. As we see Cody there, just hopefully getting past Enzo now, and he does at the inside. Just one more to get past, Yash Palmer, and then he's back directly chasing down Sienna Gordon. Oh, it was Enzo having a little look, unlapping himself there. He's got the pace, he may as well. So, we will have a look, whereabouts 
there. Daryl Taylor, race leader. As he comes into hairpin one. Second place is Daniel Fields, who's just coming out of the stadium there with the white crash helmet. Third place, as we've just established, Sienna Gordon, who's now exited stadium. And Connor Steele, oh, not quite getting past Yash Palmer there. And he is in fourth place, Yash is a lap down. So let's just, where is the next biggest battle, I think, realistically, that is the only one, as Connor, having a look now, has a better run out of the corner, gets past Yash, and now he realises the gap between him and Sienna, and that is not a good thing to see. There's still maybe a quarter of this race to go, but that is a big gap to try and close up. Not impossible by any stretch, but not easy. See Daryl Taylor just heading into the stadium. Through elbow, and let's just watch him through hairpin one. Using all the track on the way in, getting nice and close to that kerb, and floating out to the middle of the circuit so he can get back over on the left. There have been two, using all the road on the way out. That is more or less a masterclass of how to do the hairpins. Daniel Fields not using quite as much road, but using the same idea. Sienna Gordon there, third place driver. And uh, fourth place there, Connor Steele. Car 3, I think, is Knife Ford, and that is fifth place at the last time I checked. I haven't seen him have a spin or anything, so I would assume that he is still fifth place and is now lapping drivers around him. Run a little bit wide there out of uh, Pylon 2. There is a fine line at Pylon 2 between using as much of the road as possible and running too wide and slowing you down. Um, very, very slippery amount of gravel just off of the tarmac there, and that can really lose your traction, lose your speed if you get on there. There is Con Steele, and ahead of him there is Sienna Gordon. So that's the gap that he needs to close to get that third position back. So we see Daniel Fields happens two now. Let's have a glance at the scoreboard. The scoreboard at the moment is not working. So we're just hoping to get through to give him some information. Daryl Taylor with his CER race suit. He's of course, racing in Super 1 this year as well in the British Championship. Very, very accomplished driver. Has done very well in our IKR this season as well in his cadet. He's at the age now where next season he will have to go up into the next class of karting reached the maximum age for Honda Cadets. It'll be interested to see if he goes into the Rotax categories or into senior or junior X30 even. X30 obviously is growing massively but uh, it's going be interesting as well if he stays with CER. We're very much a Honda based team. 
quite like to see him stay with CEO. I quite like Darren as a driver. Nothing phases him. Oh, as we see some contact there, Daniel Fields on. Can't quite see who that was. Some contact coming in, file on one. Got past him now. It wasn't for position, it was a lapping situation. Scoreboard does appear to be working. It does confirm what I was saying earlier as a contact warning goes up to cot number 11. So that is Daniel Fields. As the stream reaches the 40 minute mark, the drivers reach the 50 lap mark. I reckon we maybe have seven minutes to go. Start the stream a few minutes before the race starts and the race will be 44 minutes or so. So who is that? What number have we got there? That is the number six. So that's Jack Hancock. Received a nudge from uh, Daniel Fields a couple of laps ago. And we're on the final lap now, so earlier than I thought. Final lap board is out on the digital board. Just about make out there. So Daryl Taylor comes through into the second half of the final lap. It's going to win this race in emphatic style. Second place it looks as though is going to be Daniel Fields. And Connor Steele not quite doing enough to catch the Siena. So Daniel Darrell Taylor takes the checker flag. Second place goes to Daniel Fields. Oh, apologies about that, didn't know I could do that. Third place to Sienna Gordon. Fourth place to Connor Steele. After an excellent battle between those two. Fifth place goes to Nye Ford. Drivers forming up now onto the bricks. Barrel pops his visor open, gets some fresh air in. Cool down a bit. So them all stopped, all the engines off. And that's their signal to jump up and head back inside. An excellent race. Especially between Connor and Sienna. And they can all be very happy with that. So thanks very much for watching guys. That's it for today. And we'll be back very shortly. with next championship. Thank you, bye-bye.